Next, I'm happy to bring to you and introduce to you uh, Emma Reeser and Becky Mitchell. If we, they're, they're going to be talking about planning as it uh, pertains to water. You know, if you want to get to your desired state of a basin, you got to close the gap between that desired state and your current state of the basin. And so a lot of our water plans that we have set up, whether it's the Rio Grande Basin Implementation Plan or the Colorado Water Plan, are both intended that we have an appropriate approach in that planning process. Um, Emma Reeser is the executive director for the Rio Grande Headwaters Restorative uh, Projects local nonprofit looking to improve the health of the Rio Grande and the tributaries here in Colorado. And then Becky Mitchell is the director of the Colorado Water Conservation Board. And she's also a Colorado commissioner on the Upper Colorado Commission. So between the both of them, they definitely provide a lot of, a lot of different uh, leadership, a lot of different representation, especially working at developing and implementing uh, water plans in different sectors of the state, and in some cases, the entire state. So Emma, welcome. Becky, welcome. We appreciate that you're here today. And uh, uh, Emma, I think I'll turn it over to, to you and you can start to, to introduce us to some of this uh, Rio Grande Basin Implementation Plan. Awesome. Thank you, Armando. Um, I'm just going to pull up here uh, my presentation really quick. Got some pretty pictures and graphics for you. Um, yeah, thank you, Armando, again, and I'm so excited to be here today to share with you about the updated Rio Grande Basin Implementation Plan, which is hot off the press. Um, just wanted to start with a quick intro for those of you that don't know about the Rio Grande Headwaters Restoration Project. We're a local nonprofit working to improve the health of the Rio Grande Headwaters um, for all who depend on it for the fish and wildlife, for ecosystems, agriculture, recreation, and, and the broader community. And we do this through implementing a wide range of restoration projects in partnership with local stakeholders. Um, so the restoration project has a long history of completing planning efforts. Um, and we're, with this experience and background, we were really excited to get to work with the Rio Grande Basin Roundtable to, to implement the, um, the Basin Implementation Plan update and to help facilitate that effort with the round table. I wanted to include this photo here of our restoration project team, Daniel, Aaron, Connor, and I, um, because each one of, of this awesome crew uh, worked really hard on the basin plan update. And so wanted to make sure to give them all a shout out. Um, to give a background too on, on the round table for those of you guys that don't um, know about the Rio Grande Basin round table, uh, the roundtables across the state were formed um, with the completion of the water for the 21st Century Act in 2005, um, and that, that set up the nine basin roundtables, which uh, include the eight major river basins and the metro area, the Denver metro area. Um, the roundtables are directed and managed locally, so our Rio Grande Basin Roundtable has diverse representation um, and uh, local folks that meet every month. Uh, so you can join us on the second Tuesday of, of every month at two o'clock. Um, we'd love to have you tune in. We have great discussions and learn together. And so definitely want to open it up to, to everyone to join us for those conversations. Um, the round table is supported by the Colorado Water Conservation Board and, and funded. So we, through that, um, support local projects and planning efforts, um, including the Rio Grande Basin Implementation Plan. Um, 
So the, the basin plans um, and the Colorado water uh, plan, which, which Becky will be talking about, was initiated by Governor Hickenlooper in 2013 um, and helped develop strategies to address the state's growing water demands. Um, as a part of the development of the water plan, each basin completed its own plan called Basin Implementation Plans. The first version completed was completed in 2015 um, and identified needs and challenges for the basin and, and it, as well as priority projects and goals. Um, both the water plan and the basin implementation plan process, of course, is an iterative one, recognizing that things are always changing. And so um, there's a need for continual con updates of these, these plans as data and, and time goes on. And so um, the state and basins are repeatedly analyzing new data and then recognizing that we need to update our plans. So the basin, um, just went through this process. Um, in 2017, the technical update to the Colorado Water Plan provided new data um, to help inform this process. And starting in 2020, um, the Basin Roundtable began, uh, they began this process. Um, so the restoration project, we were very fortunate to serve as the local experts for uh, the Rio Grande Basin and, and really supporting the round table and facilitating that process. Um, so over the past two years, we've had many meetings, um, lots of time spent with the, the round table and with the subcommittee members to really dive into the technical update data, to have tough conversations around goals and strategies and really looking towards um, reviewing these basin, the basin plan and updating it to meet our future needs. So it, of course, it's a great document. I encourage everyone to check it out, but for this pre presentation today, we don't have much time. So I'm just gonna give you a quick overview, a sip of the BIP, if you will. Um, so the, the basin plan really does an incredible job of, of laying out the, the current challenges, as well as highlighting the achievements since the last basin plan. Um, it, it, outlines updated goals and objectives, and then really dives into that technical, technical update data that outlines agricultural water needs, municipal and industrial environment and recreational needs, um, and looks at future scenario planning. It also takes that data and looks at future projects and strategies that are priorities for the basin in terms of meeting those needs across sector. I think one, one thing that we really wanted to highlight as a round table with the basin plan was achievements since our next our last plan that was completed in 2015, because there's been an, an incredible amount of work across the basin um, with diverse stakeholders to, to meet our, our current and future needs. So I wanted to just give a quick highlight of some of the ones that are highlighted in the basin plan. The, now we have a Doppler radar here in the basin, which helps um, helps us with stream flow forecasting and better data. Um, of course, you heard in the previous panel about the groundwater management subdistricts, which are operating and helping meet our groundwater sustainability requirements. Um, and then we have some awesome uh, multi-benefit projects like the Delmo Riverfront Project, improving recreation opportunities, as well as fish habitat. Um, and lots uh, across the basin, lots of effort around improving irrigation infrastructure um, to meet multiple needs, including um, improving water efficiencies for our agricultural providers, as well as improving river health. Um, along with that, a big focus of the basin plan update was really looking at the basin's goals. And so we worked hard on many, many meetings to really dive into what that looks like. And I'm really proud of the goals we have as a, as a basin. I think they, they do a great job of, of cap, um, really capturing our community and, and what's our, our values. Um, so our, our goals really focus on, um, you can read them here, they focus on healthy and resilient watersheds, aquifers that are sustainable and, and provide the basis for our farms, um, towns and, and wildlife, um, vibrant and resilient, agricultural, recreation, municipal, industrial economies that support our thriving communities, um, flexible 
uh, adaptive and creative water administration and, and uh, throughout all of this engaged and informed citizens who understand um, our water issues and are participating in, in educational opportunities like this, this incredible basin symposium. Um, a big part of the basin plan was understanding how we can um, meet our, our future needs, our current and future needs. And, and that comes down to projects. Um, and so we spent a lot of time um, with basin stakeholders um, from every corner of the basin to, um, um, to understand where there's needs for projects. And this map um, really highlights all of the projects that were submitted for the basin plan that, that then went into our projects database. 75 projects total all across the basin. Um, most all of the projects were multi-purpose projects, so meeting multiple needs. Um, and you can see the price tag on all those projects that really emphasizes the need for continued funding to support um, multiple benefit projects. And then this, um, this might be one of my favorite parts of the, our updated basin plan. And it, it's this beautiful watercolor um, done by Andrea Bachman. Um, that highlights the many uses of water in the Rio Grande Basin and how our water works so, so hard for us. Um, and it, it, it does a beautiful job of illustrating one of the most important strategies of our basin plan, which is how we can work together to make water meet multiple needs. And so a great example of this is, you know, you projects where you work with, with Irrigators, for example, the restoration project working with a, a, a ditch company to improve a diversion structure to improve efficiencies um, and reduce maintenance while also um, improving riparian habitat, adding um, fish passage um, and making the diversion safer for boating. So there's ways that we can, we can come together and, and really meet multiple needs. Um, so, like I mentioned, the, these updated plans are hot off the press. You can um, go to the Roundtable's website, rgbrt.org, um, and they're available on there, as well as engagedcwcb.org. Um, and so I really do encourage everyone to check them out. They, um, it, it's a beautiful document. It has incredible information and something that I know will be a great resource for, for our basin. Um, want to give a huge thank you to the roundtable and for everyone who provided input and comments throughout this process. Um, it's, it's just, it's been a really great couple, uh, two years um, and getting to work with everyone on it. Um, and then I also want to give a huge thank you um, to our, um, my colleague, Daniel Boyce, who was the lead for our basin on this. He's not able, he wasn't able to be here to present um, but he was really um, did the, the bulk of the work on this. And, and I just want to highlight his incredible job of facilitating the process to truly listening to every voice and making sure diverse perspectives were balanced in, in this updated plan. Um, we're really fortunate to have him on the team. So again, thank you everyone. And really want to encourage folks to, to check out the plan and to join us at the round table. Our next meeting is March 8th at, at 2 PM. And we do have virtual options too. So um, you can join from anywhere. <laughs> With that, um, I'll pass it off to Becky. Thanks, Emma. Let me get take a second and just get my presentation set up. There we go. The fact that I can do this is huge. Can can you, you all see you me? You haven't got it. You don't oh. have it done yet, Becky. Don't take credit for it. <laughs> do I have it yet? Is it there? It looks good. Okay, great. I can't see me, but that's okay. Um, I don't need to look at myself while I'm doing this. Um, first of all, I, I have to say a big thanks to Emma on presenting on the basin implementation plans. Um, it, you, that is that is really the foundation of what I'm about to talk about. So thanks for 
giving me the opportunity to provide um, a brief. I don't have good language like sip of a bit, but maybe a drink of water plan. Um, but, but a brief update on the Colorado Water Plan. For those of you who don't know me, I am Becky Mitchell. I'm the director of the Water Conservation Board, and that's really the agency that's looking at our long range planning and um, focusing on really being a part of creating um, a uh, water, a good water future for all Coloradans. So really, um, what, what, is, what is the Colorado Water Plan? And it, it's that the state's framework for solutions to address kind of the challenges. So the first water plan was published in um, 2015 following an executive order from then Governor Hickenlooper. Um, and it, it did create, it's that start of creating the framework um, for solutions for our state's water challenges. And I, I have to use this time to talk about one of those um, was the rapid pace of buy and dry that was occurring um, across the state. And so really saying that was not um, a sustainable future for, for Colorado. So um, the focus with that water plan was to be collaborative, um, but also publicly driven. And so it became this collaborative, publicly driven roadmap that started um, and, and continues to be a grassroots effort. It's like what you saw coming out of the basin implementation plan. Um, the first water plan really outlined actions that can be done on the ground. You saw some, some pictures of that. Um, of, of stuff that you guys have already done to meet these various objectives for the um, for, for the challenges like the supply demand gap, um, addressing conservation practices, agricultural sustainability, water shortage um, for future demands, watershed and environmental health, recreation and education. I think all of those things were were what we considered important and the we is the collective we, the, the we across, um, across the state. Um, so a little bit of the timeline, I talked about the first ever um, water plan in, in 2015 was released and then a progress report was released in 2017. In 2019, we released a technical update and analysis with, which really introduced new data and tools to make the plan more efficient, more effective. Um, and then at this time, scenario planning for climate change was also added. Um, we included key drivers um, such as economic stability, population growth, and adaptive innovation. We're, we, as the climate was changing, we were really seeing, okay, we have to change with it. And, and the old way of doing things just wasn't gonna work. So this important addition in the technical update allowed, allowed that flexibility for planning, especially at the local level where, where the, the good work is, is actually happening. So, and so thanks to those new tools um, and data, those, the roundtables were up, uh, able to update their basin implementation plans to better align with their local goals for water planning as well. And so, so that's, that's what you just heard about is, is that update. So those final updates um, followed a public engagement process um, were released on January 31st of this year. And so all of those are available, not just your um, basin implementation plan in the Rio Grande, Grand, but also all the other basin implementation plans. Those are available on engagecwcb.org. Um, but we're also at the same time working to update the entire statewide Colorado water plan, which I, I wanna get back to in a, in a, a moment. But uh, you got to hear about some of the local level successes since the last water plan. Um, and so before I, want, before I go into the next steps on the water plan update, I wanna share some of the accomplishments that um, our state has achieved on, on kind of the statewide level. Um, and, and how much we've achieved since the 2015 water plan. So in 2020, we celebrated the fifth anniversary of the original water plan. Um, and, and we are proud um, of the accomplish accomplishments we've made in the state in, in just those years since then. So, and, and that's all thanks to our partners. So we couldn't have done it without the folks on the ground, like what you saw. So, um, 
we made some, if not significant progress on 76% of the actions outlined in the plan. We funded 241 projects with a total of 63.5 million through the water plan grant program. And we provided 420 million in low interest loans for 82 water projects that helped advance those statewide water plan goals. So I, I think that's, um, that is, what we would consider a success. That doesn't mean we pause. That doesn't mean we stop working. Um, it means we continue working and then we even work harder. So following kind of um, getting onto the next steps, um, we, we've gone through a very robust year long stakeholder input process. It concluded in June um, of 2021. And we're so we're now in the process of um, drafting the new and improved second version of the Colorado Water Plan. And um, it's really going to focus on four main categories. And I think all of them are, are important to, to this basin, but vibrant communities, thriving watersheds, robust agriculture, and resilient planning. And, and each community really is responsible for defining what that means for their community. So a draft of that plan will be released this coming June for a 90-day public comment period, and then will be finalized based on feedback that we received um, at, at the end of 2022. So as, as I keep mentioning, and I, I will always mention kind of that locally driven grounds up process, because that's the heart, that's the lifeblood of what we're doing. Um, those basin implementation plans, again, I have to pound that they're all available on, on that website. So um, we we have ways that we're trying to connect, um, not only with people that are in the everyday water community, but um, but folks folks that um, are outside of that also that are engaged citizens that um, are focused on water. And so we have a, a newsletter, we call it the Confluence, um, and it includes regular updates on the water plan process. There's a QR code um, on this slide if you wanted to sign up and, and get that newsletter. And then I, I would urge everyone to become a part of the process. And the way that you do that, um, one of the ways that you do that besides engaging with your local roundtable is provide public comments um, on the water plan this summer when it's it's released. And then, um, if you if if you have ideas for um, projects in your community, I think first and foremost go to your basin roundtable. But remember that. Um, monies are set aside to really start looking at creating our better future. So we have our water plan grant program. If, if you have a project in mind that would meet our, our water plan goals. And I think it's always important to really get a broad based support in, in the local community, both in the community that is uh, affected or any other periphery communities. So um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I am so grateful to be here and um, I look forward to seeing folks in, in person, hopefully next year for this conference. We agree, Becky. Thank you so much for sharing those thoughts. And Emma, thank you so much for talking about some of the advancements that have happened within our own base. And I think it's a really Really, really great. To, really, really great to see the macro when we talk about the Colorado water plan on on a macro basis for our state, and then some of the micro approaches that we see within our own basin that Emma talked about, and, and some of the strategies that are that are being implemented. And it really goes to the elevation of water as a resource within our society that we are developing these these very sophisticated and complex plans. Mm -hmm. on, on how to work with that resource and how those and how the resource integrates with so many other aspects and facets of our society. I think for so long we took water for granted and we are seeing just how much that is that is changing and 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 relevant to our to our to our contemporary times, but also to our to our future vision of what we see happening for our societies. And so thank you. Thank you both very much.